This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up for brekkie, lunch, or dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight <laughs> to your door. They just drop them at your door, people. You'll save time and eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while taking all of your holiday to-dos in stride with good meals in the tum-tum. If you're too busy with all this stuff, these meals are easy. Easy to get done. They taste great. All you've got to do is head over to factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 and use code expandingreality50 to get 50% off. That's code expandingreality50 at factormeals.com slash Expanding Reality 5-0 to get 50% off. This podcast is sponsored by Skylight Frame. If you're looking for a great holiday gift, there is nothing more meaningful than a Skylight digital picture frame. Skylight is a touchscreen frame that everyone in the family can send photos to from anywhere, and they'll pop up in seconds. It is the perfect gift for new families, parents, and grandparents, or anyone who has all of their photos stuck on their phone. With Skylight, you can actually preload photos before you give it as a gift, without even opening the box. Once it's unwrapped and plugged in, the frame will light up with all those special memories. Surprise your loved ones this year with a beautiful Skylight frame, now available in multiple sizes and colors. Grab yours today because they're very popular and sell out around the holidays. For a limited time, you can get $15 off your purchase when you go to skylightframe.com slash Mary. That's right. To get $15 off your Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash Mary. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash Mary. A choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very. Expanding Reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, guys, we get to sit down with Tom Barnett. Uh, he is an Australian guy who is famous for his video about viruses going viral. Now, that is the type of irony I think that we should all strive to achieve. Uh, other than that, guys, we had a fascinating conversation. He is very into and in tune with the natural ways of healing your body, of eating naturally, uh, what's really going on. We go down some pretty deep rabbit holes here, but all of it's fantastic. All of the ways, of course, guys, to find him is linked in the show notes. Check out his YouTube channel. I've been a big fan of this guy for quite a while now. Uh, he's got some fantastic information. This is a very empowering episode, so you guys enjoy. Without any further ado, Mr. Tom Barnett. All right, very, very grateful to have the great and powerful Tom Barnett on the show today. Tom, how are you doing, sir? Really good. Thanks, Brandon. Good deal. Good deal. And you're all the way over there in Australia. So the interesting part about this, uh, doing these shows, is it's time travel for me. So it is 7 o'clock on a Sunday for me, uh, and it is 10 a.m. on a Monday for you. Yeah, already ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're already in the future, man. This is great. So what's the future yeah. look like? Are we still alive? Are we still doing okay over there? Yeah, still doing good. All right. It's still spinning. Okay, good. Well, uh, yeah. for my audience that doesn't know you, man, uh, and I'm going to be linking all the ways to find you in your show notes, but just in your own words, uh, if you don't mind, just for my audience that doesn't know you, just tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Okay, sure. Well, uh, my background is as a holistic health practitioner, and uh, I practiced for around 10 years on and off. I did it very casually and privately. I didn't register for anything. I did it all by myself. Uh, and I kept it fairly low key. And uh, previous to that, I was also an athlete, went through a lot of health conditions, uh, health issues myself. And then I pretty much gave it all away a few years ago. I moved from where I lived on the Gold Coast, which is more of like an LA kind of a area uh, or a Miami kind of an area. And um, it was too busy, too superficial, and I needed to bail. So I headed south over the border into the next state down to the Byron Bay area. 
Byron Bay is also very superficial and everything else, but the surrounding areas are beautiful. And so um, I pretty much threw all that away because I really got sick of the whole industry. It's, it's actually the whole wellness industry is really sick, in my opinion. And I didn't really want to have anything to do with it anymore. So I headed south and um, put up a tent in the forest by the beach and just lived, to live, lived like that for a year. And then I decided I'd study film. So I went from going from the health industry and I went into the creative arts and I did music and film and I wanted to tell stories and I guess the, you know, hiring a videographer is really expensive. So I thought, why don't I just study it myself? So I did that without any real intention of doing anything specific with it. And then once COVID rolled around, I decided I'd just make a video and then that video went around the world and uh, that's got me to where I am now. It's essentially, it pulled me back into that space of, uh, health and psychology. But uh, in addition, I guess these days I'm talking about our rights as well. And that's something that's gotten a lot of attention as well. It has. And I, I uh, found out about you. I was actually following you before your super video went viral. So I was already there. And then when you blew up on that thing, I was like, yes, man, hell yeah, it's about time. This guy's incredible. So that's that's amazing. <laughs> so I, I do want to talk to you about uh, the video that went viral, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So uh, about your health, your raw food and your biohacking is something um, I don't think a lot of people are. I mean, you hear the term raw food uh, and it's a little standoffish. It makes you a little squeamy. So uh, tell us a little bit just about that uh, part of your part of your program. Okay. So yeah, look, uh, you're right. You know, a lot of people hear raw food and they essentially, their mind usually goes to raw vegan. So you're just eating all your plants raw, uh, but that's not what I'm doing. And that's not, I mean, raw food, any food can be eaten raw that is digestible. And that's pretty much how you figure out what a digestible food to the human body is, is can you eat it raw? So can you eat a soybean raw? No, you, you can't. Can you eat most of those things raw, like lentils, rice, uh, they have, you know what, actually eating rice raw has a role, <laughs> can clean the intestines because it's not digestible. It essentially can gently scrape the intestinal walls. It's actually part of certain protocols is to eat brown rice raw in the morning. But uh, anyway, point being, uh, when you're dealing with a natural balanced diet, raw means everything, plants, uh, meats, eggs, dairy, and uh, you know, anything like that. I think mainly on the meats part of it, man. Uh, you know, are you doing like chicken tartare and just just riddled with salmonella? I mean, it's because it, you yeah. you hear about people that that do that and they get really really sick. So what's the difference in the way that you approach it between somebody who's just going to go grab a chicken and take a bite out of it without cooking it? Yeah, good question. It's because uh, it is confusing to people. So the difference is is how healthy is the animal in the first place, and then how have you handled it, and then uh, have you heated it? first have you frozen it first anything like that so little cheat sheet is that if meat is frozen do not eat it raw you can't thaw that out and eat it raw you'll probably get sick why because it's not a raw food anymore everything that was natural about the food is now broken a lot of the cell membranes are broken the enzymes are destroyed everything that made it its own ecosystem and with its own immune system is now gone once you've frozen it or cooked it so don't heat something and then cool it and eat it raw and don't freeze something then thaw it and eat it raw you're asking for problems the quality of the food is everything as well if you're taking meat from a supermarket well hey it's probably got a lot of it's, it's not healthy it's been uh it was never a healthy animal to begin with because it was never given enough sunlight enough exercise its natural diet it was pumped full of chemicals hormones and uh antibiotics vaccines and then you're getting that Further to that, the animal has lived a distraught life. Yeah, imagine what your life would be if you were born into a cage, you were sh had shit poured all over you all day, you never saw the sun and you were fed everything but foods that we digest, your inflammation's through the roof, you're gonna be depressed. And that, as most people would know, I think by now, uh, the issues are in the tissues, as they say. So when we feel depressed, angry, anything like that, it goes into our glands, organs, and uh, other connective tissue. So if we eat that kind of meat, we are eating the trauma story of the animal. So on every level, energetic, physical, and everything else, we're getting an unhealthy food. And so we're asking for some, for some issues there. And then how have you handled it? So for example, even if it's fresh, it's a naturally raised and then killed animal, if it's been handled with things like uh, bleach, um, 
driven around in a truck with diesel spewing out everywhere. By the time it's got to you, what's been put onto the top of it? Does it have additional chemicals on it now? So if it's not, you know, cared for well or rinsed in fresh water or something like that, then again, there's potential for issue. But having said all that, can you get salmonella poisoning or any kind of sickness from fresh, raw and healthy meat? I don't believe so because I've never seen it. Honestly, in thousands of people that I know that have eaten raw meats for even decades, way longer than I've been doing it, never once have they so much as farted from having raw meat. <laughs> it's literally, they just don't get sick because it has its own healthy ecosystem. It is a completely natural food. It's recognized by the body. The only time that it could potentially have an issue is if your body is so weak that it's um, it can't handle even the smallest amount of bacteria. So I'll explain that because that's, I guess, an important distinction. Uh, if you go overseas to another country, you might see uh, Asian countries, for example, they have their fish markets right out in the open. I remember going through Sri Lanka and Bali and places like that years ago, and I'd, I'd walk through like smelling, I just go, whoa, what, they're going to eat that? They don't refrigerate it. They don't, and, but they're not, they're like bent over the railing spewing their guts out or, you know, in the hospital with food poisoning, they're all fine. But does a Westerner have the same gut? Well, that's a, that's a good question because they're drinking their water, they don't get sick. We go and drink it and we, we get sick for a week. You know, it's like, what's the difference? Well, the difference is the terrain of the body. So an unhealthy person with a weak gut can maybe only handle the tiniest amount of uh, bacteria before they are experiencing detoxification symptoms of throwing up or getting the runs. Whereas somebody with a robust gut can take in all kinds of meat that's been buried under the earth for weeks or whatever, and they're completely fine. Not only are they fine, but their health goes through the roof with the more bacteria that they bring in and you build that up. So that's the indication that when the body is not strong, it won't handle higher degrees of bacteria, but in fresh, fresh meat, there's not an overabundance of bacteria. There is, as you age it, as it starts to develop an odor, not an off odor, like it's rotting, but an odor, or if you make high meat, then you're getting exponential amounts of bacteria. And then you have to have smaller amounts at a time. So does that kind of give you an overview of the whole? No, it definitely does. And like I said, I'm a fan. So I've heard you explain these concepts before. I just wanted for my audience that may go and investigate you, which I highly encourage that you guys do. I'm going to be linking to your TomBarnett.tv down there, as well as your Instagram and all your socials and how to find you. Of course, your YouTube, man, because you are just a wealth of knowledge and understanding. You've got a ton of wisdom on, on the natural ways of the body. And it's not something taught in Western medicine, man, because their job is not to cure you their job is to treat you and they treat the symptoms and you're all about a top-down healthy level of existence and i'm a big fan of that man i and and to the point of what you made about um uh you know the asian countries i see your guitar back there i was actually a, a touring musician for 12 years and one of my tours i went uh to china and i was there for a full month now, uh, the first two weeks I was there, man, I ate like a Chinese person, right? And I shit through a screen door uh, probably the first two weeks for sure. Then it leveled out as I got used to, you know, walking down those back alleys to the seediest places in China and having the most incredible meals. I mean, the most amazing food is out in somewhere that you wouldn't throw, you know, your garbage here. And it's uh, it, and it was. But then when I got back to the States, same thing, about two weeks to get used to this processed food diet again, to get used to all this crap. And that was back in my 20s, so I wasn't as conscious of it then. But I completely agree with you. So And yes, I think for the audience, you did a wonderful job explaining it. You're, like I said, a wealth of knowledge, and, a, and a, you're, you articulate it, like, perfectly, dude. So, um Thanks. Yeah, no, well, thank you. So uh, talk to me about uh, metabolism and health uh, now that we're, when we're on this vein. Okay, so metabolism really just refers to the ability for the body to utilize glucose and oxygen at rest, really. So it's essentially how do we create energy? Are we efficient at utilizing the fuel that we bring in and burning oxygen? So uh, it's a little deeper than that. It's really also how well the body system runs. So that's every gland and organ, your basal rate, which is your essentially your base rate. So you're creating heat is one of those functions. You're keeping the body warm, the digestive fire, keeping food moving through, digesting, eliminating properly. Uh, mood is good. Energy is good to be able to go and perform tasks such as work, play, make love, and then the ability to sleep well. Funnily enough, the tighter some people get, the worse their sleep gets. So it's regulating all of these functions as well as syncing 
with the circadian rhythms, which is essentially our sleep wake cycles with the cycles of the earth and the cosmos. So sun and moon cycles, seasonal cycles, temperature cycles, and, um, and the light cycles. So all of those combine to make the organism and how healthy the organism is. And then the metabolism in my definition of it is based on how well are we functioning in that grand scheme of things. And so when we're functioning well, all of those, uh, those sub functions will be, you know, humming along nicely. As soon as we start to experience dysfunction or a down regulation of any of those system, uh, the systems, then that's when we experience symptoms. And that's when, you know, we can say that we're, our metabolism isn't quite working as well as possible and we're not producing hormones properly, which is essentially, I guess, just to preface that the hormones to me are like the bridge between the physical and the metaphysical. So all the things that go on that are like a bit airy fairy, if, if they are not kind of coming through to the physical in the right way, it's because there's a hormonal um, malfunction. And that to me is the, the chemical messenger that separates the physical and the metaphysical. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, and you, so I wanted to ask all, along that vein still is why do you think that it is that all of this knowledge is out there? And not only is it out there, it's been out there for thousands of years, for tens of thousands of years since we've really started figuring this stuff out as, as ancient, ancient humans. So why do you think that it is that more people don't pay attention to this? I mean, I know the example of that a cheeseburger is a dollar and that a raw salad or something good for you is going to be like seven bucks. Okay. So the system in place actually has a modus operandi to keep people in poverty, to keep people sick, to keep people dependent on the system, of course. And like I said, you and I align on damn near everything, man. So I, why, why do you think, though, that more people choose the processed food diet life? Do you think it's laziness or a lack of knowledge? Do you think it's just ignorance? Oh, all three. <laughs> okay, all of Definitely. it. Okay, I agree. Yeah, because... Yeah, it's not a cheeseburger isn't a dollar though, because uh, on the surface, that's the whole point of that threads documentary that's in the works, which is going to take a lot longer to make than I thought, but it's showing what's in your hand and then following the thread from what you have to where it began and then also where it'll go in the future. So it doesn't cost it like that's the most expensive food in the world because of the cost that comes to the economy, uh, to people's welfare, to the environment, to our health. And then the actual monetary cost is quite high too, because when you look at it, what it creates, it creates a lot of unwellness, a lot of sickness and disease. And that costs a lot. It costs the individual their, their life as well. In some cases, it can really degrade their life. And that's, that's like a, you can't put a dollar value on that as opposed to an organic salad. Like you said, that's $7 of fiat currency in the moment, but has cost far less to produce and will cost far less in the future when it comes to things like healthcare or missing out on things because you have damaged your, your health. So the cost, I don't think is, well, I, I agree that that's an issue on the surface for some people, but that's because of a lack of education. Like you said, they're not educated on what is the real cost of organic food compared to commercial um, hybridized food or, or junk food or whatever, processed food, big difference. And the ignorance is there because a lot of people don't want to know. They don't want to know because the, the thing is everything has its breaking point where it's like, if I accept that as a reality, then I have to accept this as a reality and I can't accept that. So I'm not going to accept this thing. I'm not going to accept that a salad costs less than a cheeseburger or could, you know, I've seen a study by McDonald's that says the cheeseburgers are better for you than a salad. You know, it's like, oh my God. I'd, cho I'd choose, I, you know, same as vaccine, same as anything, same as like any, as you go up the, the level of deception, there's a point at which people can't accept things. They did that in the Matrix movie, you know, where the guy gets exposed to what it is. And then he's like, you know what? I want to choose the uh, blue pill because I know this steak isn't real, but ignorance is bliss and blah, blah, blah. Because there's a point at which he was not willing to look beyond. He goes, you know, his thing was if I were to accept this next level of reality as reality, it would destroy me. I would cease to function. Therefore, I can't accept any of these smaller ones in front of me. And that's what I see in the majority of people. And the reason for that, I believe, is because of the evolutionary ages that we all uh Ah, we have a biological age. We might be seven years old or 47 years old or 87 years old, but we have an evolutionary age, which could be very, very young, or it could be very, very eons old kind of old, old kind of thing. So that's the old soul expression. And so 
for, for people who I think have been around the traps a few times, they're much more willing to accept their place on earth and take responsibility. So if they find out that the world is ruled by evil people in this cabal and all that, they're like, eh, makes sense. But for somebody who's young, who's a child, who needs a parental figure to look over them and provide for them and can't question them because otherwise they're questioning their very sense of safety and security in the world, that's not a step that they can take. So they can't accept that vaccines might hurt you because it's the medical profession and they're there to help us. Police can't be corrupt because they're there to serve and protect. Laws can't be there to work against us because they're there to keep us safe. You know, governments can't be against us and want to poison our water and our air and our minds because the government looks after us. They can't see beyond that. Whereas somebody like you and I just goes, finds out, oh, there's some guy over here that's really ruling everything. Is oh, oh yeah, yeah, makes sense. Absolutely. <laughs> and there's no stress. There's no fear. It's just, oh, yeah, it makes sense. But for somebody else, it's like, what? You know, that's somebody who's waking up. Oh, my God, they're what? And they start to go into a fear cycle. What? What's going on in this world? Yep. And then you have the people that can't accept any of it. They can't accept that a cheeseburger is bad for them. And that's because they can't accept the end result. And to the degree that they can't accept that is the degree that they won't accept what's right in front of them. Like, uh, yeah, anything like that. And that's why it's fine. That's why I have no desire to like wake people up because it's not their, it's not their time. It's not their place. They would cease to function. And their role in this world is not necessarily to wake up. Their role is to experience being that not only for them, but for us. Because then we get to experience people like that just going, geez, how can you not see that? Or why would you choose that? But then that's us determining what's best for them because we think that that's best for us and therefore them. So therefore we get to have the lesson of, you know, live and let live, I guess. Completely agree. Could not agree more. And I actually came to this, of course, with this this whole thing that's going on right now. Uh, it, it was really, really hard for me to sit back and just go, oh, well, you guys can't see all these little Easter eggs here. And because I've been what's what uh, Charlie Robinson of the uh, Macroaggressions podcast, he calls it a uh, conspiracy analyst. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that because I was a conspiracy theorist for a long time. And it freaked me the hell out, man. And, and it was it was one of those things where you run around and I'm sure inevitably we all go through it. Right. When you do wake up at first and then you get a grip on these things and you run around and you're trying to shake people and just, you know, the redcoats are coming like you're just ringing the bell paul revere and out in the streets just saying you guys have got to wake up you know figure this out but like you said it does very little for you if if not the adverse effect of being incredibly damaging to you your your psychological uh, well-being your your physiological it affects everything and so yes i think that you do get to a point and i just reached this point about six months ago where i was like you know what it's not my job it's not my job to wake anybody up the information's out there if they want to find it and if they want to find it okay if not Man, good on you, you know, uh, have fun with it. But uh, it's not for me. And I've got this saying that I've been saying for a long time now, and that's tend the garden that you've got. That's all you can do. You tend this garden, your mind, you tend your body, and then you tend the immediate space and family and people that you love around you. And that's all you can control, man. And and so I agree with you. It's a very much more calm way to go about it. And I still research the topics. I still look into the issues because it's interesting, but I don't let it affect me negatively. And I don't stay up. I don't lose any sleep over it, brother. I'm completely with you on that. So did you get to that point eventually? Yeah. Inevitably? How, how did that point come about for you? Well, I was a lot younger when I came to that because uh, I, um, I just experienced that when I was a kid, I guess. So I experienced seeing things the way not, not saying that I'm, you know, what I see is truth or whatever, but I could at least see what wasn't truth. Even if I didn't know what truth was, I knew that what my parents were doing, what my teachers were doing, what was on the news and things like that. I was like, that makes no sense. And so, uh, yeah. And then I would say things and I'd get shouted down and that because you're a kid, you can't defend yourself emotionally or physically against adults or children in adult bodies is the more accurate description. And so therefore I just was like, well, you know, just, that's their thing, I guess. I'll just do my thing. So I just ended up doing my thing a lot. That's why I've gone through a lot of periods of just, you know, like just going to live in a tent in the bush for months or a year at a time, because it's like, I just do my thing. And if, and through doing my thing, I think that I get a lot more uh, in tune with myself. And then when I am in the world, maybe that's having a greater effect than having studied a bunch of stuff and trying to, you know, trying to uh, project it onto other people verbally, as opposed to just being calm and, and okay in my own world. And therefore maybe affecting people a little differently and more positively in that way. But as far as, as well, you know, you asked why, um, why do people, there's nothing new under the sun. I keep saying that people go, well, I love your information. And I'm like, it's not my information. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not mine. 
It's just, it's been going around for a long time, you know, like way longer than we've been alive. But you're, so, you're a wealth of it and it's concentrated with you and it's important things. It's foundational things. That's why you're such a great resource for this. That's why I'm driven to, to watch you and, is, and to follow your work is because you wrap it up. You're passionate about it, number one. Number two, you're incredibly knowledgeable. You've got a ton of like wisdom that comes along with the information that you're saying. It's not just a bunch of facts. You know, you, you really tie everything together. So your delivery on it, man, I, I get it. I get the appeal because I'm a fan. So I understand it completely. I know to you it's whatever. But to all of us out here that are finding out this information, you're a phenomenal resource for it because this information is being snuffed out more, more and more every day. And of course, ridicule. But but again, we don't care about ridicule. That's fine. You can make fun of me all you want. I don't I don't give a shit about that. But yeah. you doing the information the way that you do, you you've figured it out. You've captured this niche of information that people need to know. And so, of course, we're going to utilize you as a resource, brother. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. And But uh, I used other people as well, definitely. Uh, but the point being is that... Uh, you know, there's um, there's a very definite agenda to keep this information from the masses, but not completely. So it's there, but it's they've got to hide it under certain levels. So they don't just put it in the mainstream. They censor things, they delete things, they shadow ban things and whatever. They don't get rid of it completely. They just hide it under several layers. And that's because we've got to find our own path out of where we are. If it was just given to us in the mainstream, it's like we didn't have to work for it. We didn't have to believe or trust or have faith in something deeper or in ourselves to even find it in the first place. So to me, it's almost like it's a test and it's a blessing in disguise that it's not there in the mainstream because those that find it, they've made a very vested decision for themselves that they are going to find it. It's not like, oh yeah, I can just turn the news on tonight and I'll find out how the world works. It's not gonna happen. You have to first of all realize that that's not it then you have to go looking for it. Then the first few, few things you're going to find are going to be red herrings and it's not it or it's scams or whatever. And then you still have to have faith that it's there and continue to look. And then when you do that, you're rewarded. And that's when you know you've found, you know, the stuff that you're meant to find. And I think that that really is a blessing because if you don't have the resolve to find that, then you'll just get, you'll get cut off at the gates at the first, you know, the first no sort of thing. And then you wouldn't, you weren't ready. So I just, I just think it's set up, you know, in a very fair way, to be honest, you know, everyone complains that everyone keeps getting deleted here and there. I mean, I've been deleted, but I, because, but there's always another way, you know, it's kind of, I'll make a, I'll make my own site, you know, rather than just rely on their system, which is Facebook, YouTube and whatever else. Funnily enough, I'm still on both, but I keep getting banned for a week or whatever at a time and videos go missing because it violates their terms and whatever, but that's fine because I just find another way to, to get it out. And realistically, at the end of the day, one of the things that I want to get out most is that the internet isn't the reality. I think it's great because you and I can have a discussion from other sides of the world and people can pick up on a few things that they might not have heard otherwise. But at the end of the day, it's got to go somewhere because if the internet goes dark, people are lost again. So what really needs to happen from this is this is a great first step where we go, we can use it to share information and to reach people. But from there, people need to pick it up and they need to run with it and create life, real life uh, networks and real life, um, you know, everything, community. We have, to, we have to do that in real life. So what we do here is we run community meetings, we run workshops where people can come and learn this sort of stuff in person. And uh, that's, I just, yeah, without going too far into it, that's where it has to lead. Because at the end of the day, otherwise a lot of this is entertainment and um doesn't have the same effect you know yeah yeah and i completely agree uh and also uh back to what you were saying about um the the folks that can't wake or ch have chosen not to and i agree with you on the easter eggs part of it because uh, how i refer to that is it kind of calibrates your intuition a little bit and so you are able to trust your intuition a little bit more the more knowledge that you receive the more you get and it it builds your confidence and of course confidence is just a series of successes so then you are more confident and able to make your own decisions it is it's like calibrating your intuition calibrating your decision making ability and and the, if you want to pursue the information just like you said it's out there there there's other schools of thought and we can go 
went through some conspiracy theories, if you'd like, about that, that they have to overtly tell you what they're doing as far as, like, the hidden messages and things and stuff like that because it's got something to do with karma, which I'm not a big believer in anyway, just the fundamentally. But, yeah, they, they will not completely censor the information. It is out there. You can find it. And, yes, this is just a vehicle for you and I to connect, and then these people need to go out and do their own research because I know some people will be listening to this just going, damn, that guy's awesome. First of all, Ozzy, great accent. Second of all, he's had a ton of great information, and I just really want to pursue this further. So again, to the audience, I will be linking this stuff in the show notes. You guys know how this works. He's on YouTube. He's great. And this video will be up on YouTube as well. So I like your community idea. I think that, um, again, and even that's part of the woo-woo part of it, right? They're going to say, oh, you stupid hippie. You know I mean? What the hell are you doing? Get back at society. I don't know, man. I the, the more, and especially this past year, the more I think that those kinds of things, like a big city environment, I don't think it's sustainable, man. I think uh, we're going through nah. another Rome right now. I mean, it's we're in our third century as as Americans. I don't. I, it's all falling down, man. You see a bunch of people leaving the cities, going to the country. It's not a sustainable model within the consciousness that we have right now on this planet. As you said, we we are a young or a very ancient, and have you know been going through this in, uh, entropy uh, where we've just been getting dumber and dumber and dumber. And that may be the case, or we're a super young uh, civilization as well, which is we're super primitive mentally uh, and consciously. So I'm, I'm completely with you, brother. I, I like the idea. And yeah, don't just take this as entertainment, guys. This is actual information. Tom's got a bunch of really dope shit to say, so <laughs> listen to him. Yeah, well, the, uh, the, you know, the city thing is definitely, that was never sustainable. It's designed, designed to fall at some point because just the supply chains alone, people are going to run out of food and clean water very, very quickly if the supply chains fail. And that's the first thing that'll go. It's not just everything else. So uh, community isn't just running out to the country and growing your own vegetables. That's a good thing to do. But at the end of the day, it's more this interpersonal interaction because Look at what they've been trying to do with lockdowns. Don't get close to anybody. Don't hug anybody. Don't talk to them. Fear your neighbor. You know, that kind of thing. Stay in your house. It's all about whatever they do. You know, a lot of people say we're living in a world of inversion. And if the mainstream is telling you one thing, you should do the opposite. If you want to be healthy, happy, and wealthy, you should do the exact opposite of what the mainstream says, whether it's health advice, what a doctor says, or what you know the government is trying to force you to do, you go, okay, they're trying to lock us down, all right, that we should be doing the exact opposite, being outside, trying to get us not to be amongst other people, we should do the exact opposite. They're trying to tell you to get a vaccine, you should do the exact opposite. They're giving you dietary advice like a food pyramid, do the exact opposite and you'll be healthy, you know? So it's all of it's pretty much inverted. And that's that's the beautiful thing too, because it's like that, oh, okay, I get it now. And by getting it, you become self-reliant and self-sufficient because you can discern very easily what's being said, not just by a corporation such as a government or any kind of corporation, but an individual. You can discern if what somebody is saying is complete bullshit or if there's some truth in it, because this is the other element. What happens? People just go, okay, let's ditch social media, ditch all this stuff, and let's just get into community. What's going to happen? Well, the same people that were trying to be controlled opposition or whatever or lead you astray are also going to try to lead you astray in a community. They're the ones that are going to try to sell you on their programs or this, that, and the other. And you're like, oh, that sounds good. I'll hand over all my money. And then you get taken for a ride because it's still going to exist in a community amongst real people, not just online. Always has, always will. So the gift in that is learning how to discern fact from fiction amongst even interpersonal relationships. And then to me, the greatest gift of all is learning how to recognize in that in yourself because we as people lie to ourselves constantly all of the time, every day to tell us that we're better than we are. We're more competent than we are or our ideas are right or we're right. And somebody else is wrong. Most of that is a lie. And so when we get to recognize it more and more deeply and discern that in the world around us and then in the people around us, we can discern that in ourselves. And that is our path to self-realization and to finding out who we are and realizing what we're doing on this planet and then what we can do with it. But I, I think we have to go through those levels to get to there. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So what do you think the, the world is? What do you think this place that we live is? Uh, well, like, well, what I think doesn't really matter to anybody else, but what I think is, uh, is that it's, a, it's more or less a training ground. It's where we come to figure things out, to learn about cause and effect, 
karma, as you put it before, is to me, it's really just taking responsibility for what we create moment to moment, because when we create something that's not so good, we'll, we'll feel it in the moment. It's not like we'll come back as a grasshopper and then get hit by somebody with a BB gun. Mm -hmm, I don't think that's what (laughs) karma is. I think it's, I think it's what we're creating moment to moment. And we, we feel the wrath of ourself, not from a God, not from other people, but from ourselves. And I, I feel it's a training ground. And part of it is also recognizing that uh, in a duality world, there has to be people who are just like Bill Gates. You know, a lot of us wish that, oh, what, why does he have to be like that? Why are there people like that around? Well, to me, it's because they need to be around. <laughs> That's part of this world. That's part of this training ground. Because unless we can recognize evil in somebody else, we can't recognize it in ourself. Now, what we despise about other people is usually some part of ourself that we've got to like, what part of Bill Gates is in me? He's in me somewhere. If I despise what he does, then he's in me somewhere. You know, when you're getting beyond that, when you don't despise people, you're like, oh yeah, Bill Gates, eh? hey, good on him, whatever. He didn't do what he wants. I'm not going to buy into his little game. I'm doing my own. I'm creating my own existence, my own world, my own reality. He doesn't really matter to me. That's when you know you don't have that, you know, despising that hatefulness in yourself because you don't have it towards somebody like that who represents everything that goes against what a moral person would do. <laughs> so I feel it's a training ground. I, I like it because I'm on board with you. Now, even if you follow the simulation theory kind of an aspect, it's kind of like a level up or, or we're just in a game, but but you level up moment to moment. And I'm, I'm with you on that. What I meant by, and, and you're absolutely right, karma occurs in within you with, by your feelings. What is that quote? I, I do good because it feels good. I avoid bad because it feels bad. And that's my religion. I think that's how it should all operate. Now, the problem is, is a lot of people feel good being shitty to other people. And it's weird, right? I think deep down, though, and I'm with you on that, though, you need you need um, adversaries. You need the opposite of you to know you. But also, you know, there's that saying that the outside world is just a mirror of your inside consciousness and, and your existence. Now, you and I might be able to see different experiences that people are having, the fear, um, the bad health, the, the horrible relationships, the constant denigration of themselves. I don't experience that. I damn sure know that you don't experience that. And we live on the same place together. It's, it's side by side and we're all here, we're all in this together, but we all experience things differently. And it does have to do with the acidity versus the alkalinity of your body and how you want to respond to this mentally. I, I love your approach, man, because it's it's warm, it's, it's comfortable, and it's accurate, you know, from my perception, for sure. You need Bond villains out there so that you can rise up to realize that you are not a Bond villain. So congratulations, you're not a shitty person, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's just recognizing what we don't want to be. And so... You know, Paul Check, where I learned a lot from, he always says, if you don't know what your dream is in life, just figure out your nightmare, figure out your worst case scenario, and then go in the opposite direction of that, because at least then you are identifying what your core values are. If you can identify what it is that you don't want, you're at least able to identify your core values. And then from there, you can at least use that to create what your dream would be in life. And without that, you're kind of just like floating around in no man's land, you know, where it's a, that's why we need these sorts of people. We need things like injustice and immorality and things in the world. So we can recognize what it is. So we can recognize what it is that we uh, want to be in our core values. And even back to the matrix, they, he even said, Mr. Uh, the Smith program guy, when he had Morpheus all locked up uh, before that dope helicopter scene, uh, he said, you know, we tried to make a perfect version of this, but they rejected the program. So you're right. Maybe it does have to, we have to have, and we do exist in a dualistic world anyway, dark, light, hot, cold. We have all these things that are juxtapositioned to what we are, but we need that as a reference point to know, like you said, what we are and what we're not. Now, I really like what you said about that you didn't, you don't look for the truth as much as you look for the lies and you go away from that. I think that's a more palatable way to kind of approach these types of things. Because yes, you could clearly spot a lie. You're like, I don't know what it is, but it ain't that. And I think that that's a wonderful filter to view the world through, man. I, it, it sounds peaceful. I mean, you're a happy guy. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah I, I really don't. People wonder why I'm calm and stuff. It's just because I don't get angry at, at the world. Like sometimes it's not true all the time, but you know, on the most part, I just do my own thing. You know, it's uh it's uh yeah there's um there's a lot of things that i don't agree with in the world and i would like to improve but i guess that's what i just do what i can i be the best that i can be i give the education that i can give and to some people it's not education it's like it's like bullshit and it's just it's whatever and that's fine too it's like you no know, one not everyone's gonna hear everything everybody says there's no such thing as like the smartest guy or girl in the world or the best or whatever um and that's 
that's like the model that's presented always. It's a top-down hierarchical system where we have a king or a queen or a ruler or a god among men, and then everybody, uh, you know, gives their fealty to that that individual. But it's not it's not how it works because that that godliness or whatever is in all of us. And when we don't recognize it in us, we project it onto somebody else to be that for us. When we do recognize that in ourselves, that's when you realize we don't need a government. We don't need rulers. We can govern in ourselves. We can rule ourselves. Rule meaning to just govern, which means to take responsibility for. So that's that's it. And it, it's really, you know, like we've been talking about, everything's just that reflection of or that projection of what's inside. And I guess the the beauty of that too, though, is that you kind of alluded to it before, but you can be outside of that as well. There are many ways in which you can go outside of whether it's a simulation or the duality or it's real or it's not, whatever it is, you can go outside of that through, through various methods of not being embodied in the physical all of the time. And you can travel to many other places that don't have that duality and that maybe is that perfect place that they rejected, but it's not the training ground. So that's, that's the difference. There's yeah, we can talk about different ways to achieve that, but it's also something that even just holding that, possibility in mind is enough for a lot of people that this isn't the only place that life takes place. It, it is. And you're absolutely right. And I think for me, it was psychedelics. Uh, whenever I got into psychedelics as a young man, that's when I really started to open my eyes to possibilities. And that's when things, I mean, it shifted this stable reality that I'd grown up in since then, this very rigid, very safe, very reliable existence. And it said, fuck you, buddy. And I was just like, okay, got it. And that really is what launched me into uh, my, you know, exploring, expanding my perceptions a little bit and realizing, yeah, man, that we are uh, being screwed over by a bunch of people, but we don't have to, we can be dispassionate about it. You don't have to let it affect you negatively because it doesn't. They're not coming into your home right now. They're not, you know, doing that. To some people they are, but maybe that's a mirror world of what they expect. Uh, And also the choices that they've made, however you want to go about that. What, what are some alternatives for you? I know meditation, I know yoga, I know um, all of these practices. Uh, what's your go-to? What's your favorite? Uh, yeah, I don't even know why I brought that up because I, don't, I can't really articulate that because uh, I've never done psychedelics myself. I think they've got a really good place and I, I, I even recommend them to people as clients. Sometimes they're having difficulties with certain parts of their life and uh, weighing all things up then uh, certain substances, I think a good prescription for somebody in certain situations for sure. Um, for me, it's just always been, uh, I don't know, I, I've just, things broke open for me at certain times. To tell you what I really think it is, I think it's two things. One is trauma and then the second is a connection to nature as a result of the trauma. I think that's really what it is. I think people find it a number of different ways, but once you've seen it, you can find it uh, to go there. Meditation, I think is one of the key uh, ways to do that. But for me, it's deeper. It's, it's principles. So the principle behind meditation is really discipline for me because discipline, it takes discipline to still yourself and it takes discipline to even want to or find the time to meditate, for example. So it's when you can find those, uh, those deeper values of say discipline or whatever that might be, or of uh, honor or respect or uh, reverence, those kinds of, uh, you know, more resonant states of being, that's when I think you access all that naturally is by embodying that because that's when you can tap into things much deeper within yourself and therefore go, it's almost, I find it like if you're a, uh, and they're like a circle and you, you're always operating around the periphery of the circle. And then the deeper you go, the more you still, the more you'll go into the center of the circle. But that's not the world like Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. That's all around the outside. And then your work and that's all around the outside. Going into all the stuff that that is not a part of, going away from that world, then you get to the center. Once you're in the center, it's almost like you go, whoop, you just drop out of this, that part and then you float and you're outside of it looking in. And that's when you're experiencing other things outside of your own body and this physical duality that we experience now. And... Uh, yeah, it's to me, it's a discipline because it just, you have to be still to do that. Some people access it more easily than others. And I think that comes through trauma. Okay, I agree. Uh, and, and what's nice about this kind of stuff and everything you talk about, man, is it's accessible to everyone. This isn't something that you're asking for a bunch of money to give the information for. Your information's out there. Everyone has access to, to this kind of lifestyle. And, and it's great. Like I said, I love what you're doing, man. So um, will you talk to me about viruses? 
Yep. Okay. So, so basics. So the basics are that a virus is not a living organism. So the first thing to get your head around is the whole transmissibility idea of a virus. So if something's transmissible or has an effect on a biological organism, it should really be alive first and foremost. And a virus is not alive, even by modern scientific medical science standards, it's not a living organism. So it can't cause the same kind of harm as something like a flesh eating bacteria or something like that. Having said that, arsenic and mercury are also not alive, but they wreak havoc on the body. So then we've got to look at what happens when, uh, you know, trauma is happening in the body. So the way the body is set up is that the majority of our um, physical nature is actually microorganisms. It's mostly bacteria, fungus, parasites, protozoans, things like that, rather than just human DNA. And so if that's the case, well, it has to be for a reason. If we didn't need to be mostly microorganisms, then we wouldn't be because what's created so perfectly, it's like that can't be a mistake. It's, it's, like, it's not like there for no reason. Everything has its reason and purpose in the, in the natural world. And so therefore we have to ask, what is that reason and purpose? So it turns out that if you study fungus, bacteria, parasites, and all that kind of thing, that essentially just janitors it's like calling a cleaner to come and clean your home and they all have a different role and, and they're good at different things so their role basically is to take the things that the body can't break down and break it down for us to essentially clean and make uh well make good of the processes that our body just doesn't do by itself our human dna doesn't do it we need these little critters to do it so they're very efficient too. They can break down a large amount of garbage and turn it into a really small amount of garbage that the body can then dispose of. So what happens though is that if the body, if we've got too much going on via way of poor lifestyle, which includes diet, uh, lack of exercise, lack of sunlight, um, poor thoughts and all that kind of thing, uh, heavy, dark belief systems, then we create an excess of the garbage and when the body can't clean that out, for example, even in a healthy body, our cells, all of the cells in our body are continually dying off, being uh, you know, broken down and excreted and we're, we're replacing them. We're regenerating those cells all the time. Skin cells, we know that they flay. That's why we clean our bedding and all that. So uh, part of that is that if we don't properly move dead and dying uh, cells away, that's what, why we'll form a tumor or a cancer because the body is not disposing of its own waste properly. So it'll form something around it to actually protect itself from what is now dead and dying foreign material stuck in the body. That's not good for us. That's essentially what a cancer is. So we have bacteria and fungus and parasites that will break that down. The thing is, if it's a lot of gunk and it's highly toxic, then it can die in the process because it's a living organism. Anything living is... Uh, susceptible to anything that's highly toxic. So it can die as a result of breaking things down. So if living material is susceptible to damage or death because of a toxic environment, it would make sense that the thing that could handle that is a non-living organism or not an, a non-living entity, not an organism. So if it was a house, for example, it was so full of mold and gunk and shit everywhere and on the walls and whatever. And every time a living person goes in to scrub it down, they're like, they're like, oh my God. And then it's so toxic and they just, wow, they just melt and die. Well, then you'd send in a robot, maybe a robot who is impervious to mold and shit on the walls and whatever else. And the robot can clean it and get it out of the room and not die as a result. They might just and they break down into smaller particles and then get out of the room. But that's essentially all the virus is. It's, it's non-living, cannot be killed by the body's own uh, processes or toxicity, and is a, just a cleaning agent. And that's why viruses can't be isolated. They never have and never will because they don't exist outside of tissue. Actually, going back to the raw food thing, that's why you want to eat healthy tissue. Why would you get sick eating unhealthy tissue? Well, because it's unhealthy, it's sick, it's weak tissue, and it's toxic therefore carries high levels of bacteria, parasites, fungus, and perhaps viral viruses in the tissue. Now you can't get that virus into your bloodstream still because your stomach doesn't link to your bloodstream. You've got membranes and you've got layers of everything to stop that from happening. You can't get solid, you can't get particles like that into the bloodstream. 
until it's gone through many processes. The only way to get that directly into the bloodstream is via injection. So that's why they have to vaccinate you with a needle. That's the only way they can get foreign particles that otherwise are not allowed into your bloodstream. It's the only way you can get it into your bloodstream. And, um, but yeah, a virus, just to summarize, is non-living, cannot be uh, passed from person to person, especially can't be passed through the air or from animal to human, can't be done. And um, is simply there to break down what your body or your body's microorganisms cannot break down without causing damage or death to themselves. That's all the virus is. And then the symptoms of being sick is just the result of the viruses working to clean out the toxicity. And it just needs you to shut down for a yeah. little bit, settle down. We'll get this cleaned up for you and we'll move on. Exactly. Yeah. It's the fallout. So it's when things, when you've got all that gunk in you and tissue that just hasn't been moved through by the normal processes and normal pathways of detoxification, then you're going to, it's going to clog you up a bit. It's going to have to be pushing a lot through. You're going to feel sick. You're going to get a temperature. You'll get a runny nose and stuff or a blocked nose because you've got a lot of mucus. Your blood pressure might change. Everything will change. Your ability to regulate your metabolism changes. Everything changes as a result. But once it's passed through, as long as you're not a weak, toxic, and degenerated human being, you are going to feel better as a result. You'll feel lighter, stronger, ha happier, and healthier as a result of having a good spring clean. Much like cleaning your house out, you feel good after it. You're like, this feels good. I feel good. It's the same process. Absolutely. And so it's a spiral either way, right? So the people who are very unhealthy and they get sick a lot, well, you're going to be very unhealthy and then you get sick a lot. I don't get sick that often, man. I get sick maybe once a year and it is, it, it puts my dick in the dirt as we say out here. But other than that, after that, I'm done and I'm over it. I mean, I can go on fuck off or sleep. I'm fine with it. Now I don't eat the healthiest. I'm not the healthiest person ever, but I do have a sunny disposition about damn near everything. I'm a boundless optimist. I, I don't let the, the bullshit affect me. And I, I'm outside constantly, man. We live on a, on 12 acres out here. So I'm out with the animals. I'm always doing something on the ranch. You know, it, it, we have a lot of activity. I'm always digging in the dirt, which is where that microbiome is, man. That's a way to go. And to compare the viruses can't be ingested and need to be injected, it's kind of like snake venom, right? Snake venom, people say, oh, snakes are poisonous. There's nothing poisonous about them. Uh, they're venomous because if that venom gets in your bloodstream, you're fucked. But if, it, if you drink snake venom, you're fine. Your body can process it just fine. Yeah, yeah. It's actually the lymphatic system it gets into, is my understanding, rather than the bloodstream, it's the lymphatic system. I could be wrong, but I think when a snake, because we've got a lot of poison snakes in Australia. I was about so to say, you're the you, expert, not, not me. When, <laughs> when you get bitten, if you get bitten by a snake, the idea is to stay calm and not move because it's in your lymphatic system. And lymphatic doesn't pump by itself. You have to move. So if you don't move and make that go through your system and you just put a splint or like a, a um, pressure bandage around it, uh, then it won't move through the body and uh, and kill you. Whereas if it's in your bloodstream, you can't really stop that. You'd have to put a tourniquet or something on to stop the blood from getting anywhere. Um, so yeah, a again, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's lymphatic system. But either way, it doesn't matter. Like you say, you drink it, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, because it doesn't go in the bloodstream from your stomach. That's fascinating, man. Uh, or the lymphatic system, rather. So uh, why do you think... <sighs> what's What the hell's going on here, man? What is this all about? Like the, the shit we're going through right now, the, the people just blindly obeying. I, I get ignorance and I get that there's not a lot of people woken up, but what do you think the mechanism for that? Do you think it's just as simple as either, um, what do they call that? Either uh, just eradicating a lot of human uh, eugenics um, or is it making money or a little bit of both? Yeah, money's irrelevant to me because they make money up anyway. So there's only so much money you can have before you've got more than you can spend. So money essentially is a, uh, well, there's no money in the world anymore anyway. It's all currency. Right. Currency sounds like current in the sea. So if you control the current, you control the movement of people essentially and the movement of their energy. So me, money has always been about energy because money is just fake anyway. But it's kind of like little flakes of fish food or whatever. It's just, you put a certain amount in, give some to, to some people to withdraw it from others. You, you uh, essentially control human behavior by controlling their energy with money. And so for me, what it does is it, it distracts people. People do most things people do in their life. They wouldn't do if there was no such thing as money. It's a rare person that does what they do because they love it. And money just happens to come as a result. Those people have really figured things out, uh, but they're few and far between.
And so for everybody else, they're usually making a lot of compromises in the name of money and, and feeding themselves and, and clothing themselves and things like that. Not only does money usually equate to safety and security, but it also equates to status and the acquisition of material things, which mean nothing and actually can distract and blind you from the reality of yourself. So on many levels, money to me is an energetic drain. That's all it's there to be done. It's not about wealth because there's only so much money you can have before it's irrelevant anymore. You know, you, you can't just keep buying stuff, but you can control people. Anybody who's had money knows that they can have people work for them. And I've worked for plenty. I've worked for uh, movie stars. I've worked for athletes, musicians, royalty, CEOs of big companies. I've worked for a, you know, a lot of wealthy people. And I see what happens. And I see this, you know, the sad thing is that with notable, like I won't name them, but with few exceptions, if that money were to dry up, those people would be kicked to the curb. They'd be the lowest person in society. They they have built themselves up through the status with the money. The sad thing is, and they know it on an unconscious level, is if that money dries up, those people that are around them, those yes men and women, the people doing their laundry, the people driving around, the people like, oh, you're so great at everything, they're gone in a flash as soon as that money's gone. And, um, and so you see the way money can control dynamics and create uh, uh, energy uh, dynamics as well. So for me, the elite, they use money to simply distract us and to control us, but to drain our energy. If you go out slogging yourself in a field for 12 hours a day just to feed yourself, and it's not something you would do anyway, because if it was your field, you'd do three hours work and you'd feed yourself from what's in your own field. Your energy is not created nor destroyed. It can only transmute. So what happens when you waste energy? What happens when you stress about losing your house and things like that or feeding your family? That energy is something, it's tangible. So the question is, if it isn't created or destroyed, it only transmutes, where does it go? To me, what they're doing is they're, they're creating the stress and the fear and, and what they can create in a system with money because they extract not time and not labor to create electronics or whatever else, they suck the energy much like in the matrix movie where people are in those pods and then their, their essence is being extracted. I believe that that's what money does. It, it creates a tap or a sink that is like not plugged of energy that is just continually released. And that doesn't just go nowhere. I think that they take that energy to feed themselves. And um, there, as, as far as what's going on, I think it's just, they're doing their running their tests to see how, how easily, what method by which they can depopulate the earth the easiest. So they'll put things out. Here's a vaccine. Now, if you don't get it, you won't travel here. You won't do this. You won't do that. That's just a test. It's a test to see who will line up for it. How many people will just go, fuck that. I don't care what you say I can't have. I'm not going to get it. That's a test to see where people are at. Same with mask. Here, wear mask. Wear four masks. Wear a box of masks. How many people will comply? and not question it, not bat an eye. How many people will say, I really don't believe that that's true, but I'll wear it just to fit in and not, the, not rock the boat. And how many people will just go, fuck that. Don't care what you do or say, never putting that on my face. So what it is, it's a marketing. They're testing the market to see who will walk right into it, who's on the fence and who's absolutely not. And from getting their own bell curve, like they're marketing a product, they can decide how to market it, how to execute it and what will be the best plan of attack. And so that's what I think they're doing well with all of this is just figuring out what move to make. Can they do that, do it very softly through vaccines or will they have to, they're like, nah, not, on, not enough of them. We're going to have to use like direct energy weapons and like incinerate a bunch of them. Like, what is it? We know they want to depopulate the earth. That's not a secret. They put that out in too many movies to list. It's on the Georgia Guidestones. It's on everywhere. It's on placards everywhere. It's all over Freemasonry and everything. So they need to depopulate the earth or not need to, they want to. Well, need or want, whatever it is, they want to depopulate the earth. So will people depopulate themselves or do they need to give us a helping hand? I think that's what they're figuring out at the moment. I, that's what this is all about. I, I will look at money the same, by the way, ever again, and good call on that. I, I think energetically, you're absolutely right, because there's there's kind of the idea that the archons are that there's energetic beings here and that they do suck energy out of us, like energy vampires. They just take all of our energy and drain it. And you know people, you've been, been around somebody that just drains you, man, of your energy. You're just like, God, you know, Barry, he's just an asshole. But, um, you know, what about the, why would they want to depopulate the earth if they get energy from us being miserable? Why don't they just keep us miserable? 
Yeah, see, that's that's a really good question. I'm not actually sure of the answer, but I think what it is is that they uh, – uh, well, there's so many ways to try to explain this without knowing the answer. So it's either because there's more on Earth than they're letting us know about. Like the things, the, the lands and the seas that we know of, there's more than that because, hey, none of us have ever really seen the Earth from above or, you know, traversed the entire globe ourselves, if it's a globe or it's not or whatever. I think there's more land than there actually is here. And there's other realms, whatever it is, there's something more than what's here. So what they do is they essentially use us as fodder and as labor to create what they need, not only to feed themselves with the energy, but to create what they need to move to where they want to go or to keep this realm for themselves again. Look, we've got enough. We've figured out how to store your energy. We've been taken in batteries or whatever. And now we've got enough. We don't need you anymore. You're just sucking up valuable oxygen and taking up the spaces that we want. We want to be surfing these breaks that you guys are all over and whatever else. Or, you know, we want that mountain view, whatever it is. They don't want us around, but they need, they, not all of us remember, they still need what? 500 million is the number that apparently- Georgia Guidestones, yeah. They're working towards. Yep. That's still a lot of people. That's so they still need us in some way, shape or form, whatever it is. I don't know the answer. I can only speculate. So it's, it's either they've, garnered enough energy now and they figure out how to store it and the number that they need is half a million to keep it going or there's lands beyond what we're told exists or there's realms beyond what we know how to access through various points of the earth or whatever or methods that you know we've seen everybody knows because everybody dreamt it as a child and i tell you one thing that i've been doing a lot is i've always had well since i switched on i've always had a fascination with indigenous culture and they're dreaming. They always talk about their dreaming. They dream their way to other worlds or to whatever it is. And then we dreamt a lot as children. We dreamt a lot of flying and traveling to other places and not by walking or driving or getting in a plane. We just knew that these things were possible, teleportation, telekinesis, time travel, all that sort of stuff. So then we're shown that that's possible through the TV shows and the movies we watched as kids and the stories we hear. But we're also taught that it's absolutely not possible because we get resolutely stuck in the physical through our indoctrination process. I would use the term educational system, but it's an indoctrination system. It's not an education. So we're simultaneously shown what we can do, but also told that that's make believe in that story. Same as the way we're hypersexualized in society with like everything in marketing and everyone's Instagrams is full of like asses pointed at cameras. Yep. And then we're also told that it's wrong to have feelings of lust and it's it's uh, you should hide your masculinity and your sexuality and all that. So we're hypersexualized and then we're demonized for having sexual thoughts and feelings. So it's the same as this system from how we're reared is that we're shown what we're capable of, but also told that we're not capable of it. So we have this confusion, but we kind of know we can do it, but have no idea how to access it, how to access the powers that we have. Because I believe that their greatest fear is for us to wake up to how, not, not to wake up to their agenda, but to wake up to how powerful we really are, what we're really capable of. And so while we fritter away that energy, we're chasing money, chasing attention, fame, um, chasing you know the lust of others and whatever, I think it's all going in the wrong direction because if we actually put that into the right places, we would figure out how to do something like teleport or dematerialize or heal from stuff or go to other places or whatever. I really know that, I don't just believe it, I know that we can do that. The thing is, I don't know how, because I haven't figured out how to retain enough of my own energy to actually do any of those things, but I do know that those are a reality. All right, well, you work it, You work on it, I'll work on it. I think you're gonna get there before me though. I'm pretty sure you just teleport out here to Texas and we'll have a beer real quick whenever you get here. But, <laughs> I, and, and the other thing is you took the wind out of my sails, man. All my Instagram is, is my ass just pointed at cameras. That's all it is. So now I gotta turn that off. I gotta take that down. <laughs> That's all it is, man. I, you know, and, and you're on the right show, man. We speculate wildly here. I've inter interviewed a ton of uh, UFO abductees, I'm, I'm, a ton of UFO authors. We discuss ideas like this. This is, this is you're on the right show. So you are welcome to do that. Now, I haven't heard you uh, explain things in that way and energetically like that, but I completely we're on board here. I completely understand you have a home here. So um, we'll we'll probably get this wrapped up pretty soon, man. But you're, you're just badass, dude. I mean, I knew you were cool because I've seen you for a long time, but just interacting with you is just an absolute delight, man, and an, honestly an honor. So um, I just but had a couple couple quick questions for you, a couple softballs, you know, and then we'll we'll let you run out here. So yeah. <laughs> uh, if if you could change one thing about reality, existence, the planet, any of it, what would that one thing be? 
Um, what I just said, uh, actually not have been so separated from, I, I like the challenge. I like it being a challenge to figure out how to find these powers that we really have. But um, at the moment I feel with the way I was poisoned through the medical and dental industries and a number of other things, I, I'm really wondering how far away that is as a reality for me to experience in this lifetime. So my only wish is that uh, for things to be different would have been to sure still make it a challenge, but not as great of a challenge that it might be to actually ascertain, you know, those abilities in this lifetime. Yeah. Start at the beginning line, not 20 yards behind it. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that's a great answer. Okay. And then out of all of the abilities that we could have, I'll give you two, uh, two superpowers or extra sensory abilities or whatever you want. What, what are your two? Uh, do you know why? Do you know why that's the best question? Cause I can't answer it straight away. And that's probably one of the reasons I haven't been able to find. I just figured out you just, you just helped me realize why I haven't, one of the reasons I haven't found these powers. Okay. So, uh, cause you haven't spoken them into existence. You haven't requested, you haven't asked. For yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. I'll tell you one, I'll tell you a couple of things that I've worked with just quickly. One is uh, telekinesis, which is the ability to move something with just your, like, you know, in star Wars using the force to like move something. Yeah. Um, and I've done it since I was a kid. I've, I can feel an object with my hand. Even if I close my eyes, I can tell when something moves in front of my hand. Like I've always been able to feel it. And I thought I was weird as a kid. I'd be like, mom, mom, I can feel like when something's in front of my face. And, but the adults never, you know, entertain that. And I do it with animals too. I, if, if a bird flies past or I walk past a horse or a cow, I put my palm up and I can feel the animal. And, and there has been times where I've like, I'm like, move this way a bit or do this. And they have done it. And then other times I just ignore you. And I'm like, so I'm like, I know there's some ability there, but I haven't, I haven't developed it because I don't think I've really had a reason to develop it. I'm just like, I haven't had the reason, but to give yourself an answer, I would say to fly, whether it's teleporting or whether it's actually flying, like a lot of people depict that in mythology that we can actually fly. And that'd be one of them. I'd love, just love to be able to do that. Yeah. And um, the other one would be to, uh, yeah, see, I don't even know what the other one is. <laughs> well, flying's a good one. I mean, I, and, but telekinesis is interesting. So you're, it sounds like you're a fraction of the way there on that. So maybe, like you said, you haven't asked for it. You haven't tried it, right? Or, or honed in the craft. It sounds like you've got some natural abilities there. Set up a small experiment for yourself and make that a goal for you. You're a very goal-oriented and setting kind of a person. So I think that if you put your mind to it, I actually know this, you'll be throwing rocks uh, with nothing um, and you know juggling something in the air without yeah. touching it in no time, man. Uh, maybe even yeah. just to have like a fidget spinner sitting on the peg or something, and then you just make it rotate from away from it. You know, Even something as simple as that, right, would kind of prove it to you. I, yeah, I think a candle is the way, isn't it? Like to have a candle and then just to try to make the candle just move slightly, like the flame, like a flicker with just your, uh, and I know people can, well, I've seen videos of people doing that and, and lighting things on fire with their own chi, but I also wonder if there's any trickery in the videos. But um, I do believe uh, absolutely that people can do it. And so uh, I'll work on it for sure. Okay, work on it because maybe, maybe yes, there and you have to find this out for yourself. So maybe, yeah, there is some fuckery going on with that. So you could be the one that proves that it's not because we're going to trust what you do. I have seen one where there's like a peg with a toothpick and then you put a folded, a uh, small piece of paper folded in half like a, like a tent over the top of it and then you put a cup over it and then you just sit there and you work with it and you get it to spin on the inside of the cup where no atmosphere right. is activating it or whatever try that man I'm, and check back in with us we'll expanding reality we'll check back in with you to see where we're at on that another fun exercise is i've seen somebody do this to where they said point out a small cloud in the sky and then just say disappear evaporate go into the uh, to the atmosphere disappear evaporate go into the atmosphere and they focus their mind on it I'll be damned, man, if not in five or 10 minutes, that cloud's completely gone. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, yep. it's, it's like totally us buy that. realizing our powers, you know? Um, so I completely agree with that. So, all right, flying and telekinesis, we'll take those. We'll, we'll take both of those. Uh, okay, so um, this is just a fun one I've asked just because I, like uh, I like the answers that I've been getting on this lately. So you can have uh, dinner with three people in time. History, language, none of it's a barrier. So who's three people you'd like to sit down and have a conversation with? Uh, Jesus to find out if all the stories are true and what he really was or wasn't, uh, Hitler for the same reason to find out if he was a nasty guy or if he was actually 
uh, somebody that was actually protecting the free world against the Zionist Jews and um, who else? It's just one of my ancestors. I'd love to meet one of my ancestors, somebody who still lived the old ways, who still upheld the old values of the culture that I came from. Because after time, all that started getting diluted, you know? So to go back to the last true lawman of my ancestry and those three, that'd be good. That's perfect. That's a great answer. And I like I liked the first two and I like the reasons that you said for the first two. Brilliant. And uh, the ancestor one, of course, man. And then to have all these guys in a room together, that would be just fascinating. Good call. Well, uh, my friend, uh, just tell the folks out here uh, where, they, where they can find you and we'll, we'll cap it off here, man. Cool. Yep. So I've still got my Facebook and my uh, my uh, YouTube under my name, Tom Barnett. I've got Instagram at TomBarnett.tv. And my website is TomBarnett.tv, which has all of the content that I've done since that viral video. All the ones that got deleted off of the internet and things, they're all on there. And you can contact me through there as well. I've got several methods of contact on the website. Perfect. Man, thank you so much for your time, dude. This was so cool. You were, I knew you were going to be awesome, but this was this was incredible. So thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Glad you liked it. I had fun too. Thanks, Brandon. A massive thanks to Tom Barnett for spending some time with us today. I uh, went down some great rabbit holes, have some fantastic information there to look up. Uh, as always, guys, we encourage you to do your own research on this. If you've stumbled across this episode um, and you feel like it was an accident, it was not. Uh, big, big believer in synchronicities over here. You guys know that what happens happens for a reason. You needed to hear this. You needed this information. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Go check out his YouTube and his uh, website. It will be linked down there in the show notes. Uh, follow this guy. Uh, he's got some wonderful information. And if nothing else, a very freeing perspective on how to empower yourself to live the best life that you want for you because that's what this is all about this is your life guys you only get so many spins around the sun enjoy the hell out of every single damn one of them so uh, as far as this show goes uh, you can find us at expandingrealitypodcast.com that is where the link to all of the socials will be uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube. This video will be up on YouTube, so go check that thing out. Patreon as well, guys. Contribute as much or as little as you feel. If you find the show valuable, uh, thank you for doing that. We do appreciate all of the support that we get here. Uh, any questions for Tom or myself about this episode or anything in general? You just got any random question, I'll help you out. Uh, email the show at expandingrealitypodcast at gmail.com. That's where all that can happen. Now, you guys know what I'm going to say. Pick up a piece of litter. Uh, do something nice for somebody else. Buy a meal for somebody else. Buy them a healthy meal, by the way, not a burger, because we know the true cost of that now. Uh, as well as just get out of that left-hand lane. If you're in the left-hand lane, get out of it. You're not supposed to be there unless you are going faster than the car behind you. And that's just the way that this works. We live in a society. Other than that, guys, as usual, go out in the world, feel empowered that this life is your life and live it the way that you want. Don't hurt anybody else. And you have free reign to do whatever the hell you want because you are a sovereign human being on this planet and that's how it should be. In general, guys, y'all just be good to one another. Grateful that you're listening. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Grandma, can I have the chocolate chips? This secret recipe moment made possible by Emory Heart and Vascular Center. When Grandma needed heart care, she came to Emory. The difference? Emory Healthcare performs more heart procedures annually than anyone else in Georgia, which means better outcomes for our patients. And we offer advanced and personalized treatments developed by our top specialists that others don't. Like Grandma Knows, where you start your heart care matters. Smart cookie. EmoryHealthcare.org slash smart cookie.